I do think that ATS's focus on advocacy does set it apart. Through our advocacy work, we can leverage all that expertise. And we have to be not just advocates. I think we have to actually be activists. As a major voice in the respiratory community, the American Thoracic Society advocates for its members and the patients they serve. It's a key focus of the ATS, harnessing the power of its international stature to increase funds for research and public health measures and to improve access to care and worldwide respiratory health. The reach of ATS advocacy is extensive and it starts with the patients. I think it's crucial. As physicians, we have the ability to be a voice for our patients and to improve their health. We have this network of energized members who all are working together so that we can advance policies that support the public health of our larger communities. Advocacy efforts are targeted for maximum efficiency and effectiveness. So in addition to the Health Policy Committee, ATS has several advocacy committees, the Tobacco Action Committee, the Environmental Health Policy Committee, and the Research Advocacy Committee. I was drawn to ATS advocacy because it was an opportunity to really engage on issues of air quality and climate change at the national level. By providing expert congressional testimony and advice to the EPA, the ATS enhances and supports regulatory legislative priorities around air pollution and its health effects. When air quality improves, everybody benefits. Lung function of kids and adults, risk of asthma attacks, COPD hospitalizations, heart attacks, premature mortality. Increasing federal funding for research is a top priority. So research funding for the NIH, in particular for NHLBI, which is the part of NIH under which lung disease fall. Smoking tobacco is a leading cause of preventable death in the U.S. and a major focus for the ATS. An effort that we've been working on for years is eliminating flavorings from tobacco products. Most recently, the FDA announced the intention to eliminate menthol from uh, tobacco products within the next year. This is a win, but what ATS um, will continue to do is to advocate and make sure the FDA follows through on that. I can draw you what menthol looks like. It's a chemical compound. And I can also draw you the receptor that's expressed on cells that menthol engages with. So it's not just a flavoring, it's actually a drug. And ATS leaders battle the drug's use and the health disparities that result. Menthol has disproportionate effects in communities of color. More than 85% of African American smokers use mentholated cigarettes. ATS members are passionate about improving access to care and the diversity within the profession. And being able to tell a patient, we can make you better. It's an awesome power. It's a wonderful ability. And I like to communicate that to all of the eight, nine, 10, 11 year old kids in under-resourced communities who may not think that that's reachable. And, and that is part of my, my activist goal also within ATS. Efficacy is strengthened through partnerships with those affected by respiratory diseases. This is a place that gives us a voice. A voice amplified by the ATS Public Advisory Roundtable. I always feel like it's medicinal. It provides us hope. It is medicine in itself to see the activities of the ATS and all of the work that's being done on our behalf. Roundtable members help reinforce full-time efforts of the ATS Washington, D.C. office to get and maintain the attention of congressional leaders through work on Capitol Hill. Hill Day is tremendously important. and We target states where there are members who are in key positions in the House and Senate on the Appropriations Committee, for example. And this is really a unique opportunity. Our patient advocacy roundtable representatives also come with us. Helping to move public health measures forward while pushing back on environmental rollbacks. Like rollbacks of fuel efficiency standards for vehicles and rollbacks of EPA's authority to regulate carbon emissions. For many people involved in the ATS, like Donna Appel, there is no time for backtracking or rollbacks. I guess my most honored role and my 
scariest role is the role of a mother who might die of lung disease. And I think that the ATS gets that and they understand it. I'm, I'm surrounded by people who really understand my urgency and they feel urgent as well. And that includes her daughter who joined her mother for this interview. It feels like a blessing. A lot of the work that we do is challenging, but also rewarding when we can uh, make a difference uh, for our patients. The world doesn't know how much the ATS is helping it to breathe. And I think that's the magic of ATS. The fact that we have so many people with different skill sets that are all working to a common agenda, and that is to promote respiratory health.